O'Connor and in this video I'd like to show you how to be able to paint on-site watercolors without having to carry a lot of stuff. What I like to do is carry a little Cotman fill box that fits right in my back pocket. It's like this. It's about six inches by three inches by about two inches deep. Now in this particular set the lid comes off which will turn into your water cup you open the box, unfold your palettes, you have your colors, the water cup attaches to the top of the box, there's a compactable brush which opens, and you have your water bottle. and I'm all set to go. Then I carry my paper in my pocket. You can carry a notepad if you'd like, but I like uh, to use scrap paper that I have in my studio. And usually it's about a 300 pound cold or rough pre uh, press paper. And so now all I have to do is just have it all like this and I'm ready to go. Now what I like to do is I like to go for walks or if I decide I want to go uh, driving around and I want to easily pull off to the side of the road, something quick that's going to give me a memory. Um, this is all very convenient. I don't have to carry so much, make it such an ordeal before I begin to paint. And also when I began painting in the, in the very beginning, what was uh, very helpful to me was to begin in a small format. So this is again almost like returning to that. Now. I started with like a 4 by 4 inch square when I was uh, learning how to become successful. And then I would move up to a 6 by 6, up to 11 by 14, and then a 22 by 30. Now, how I feel that that is um, a good way to start is that you, you, have, you give yourself a perimeter and you work within that perimeter and then you don't get lost. And then after you've accomplished that particular size, you can slowly move up to the next size and then slowly move up to the next size after that. Otherwise you might feel very frustrated and feel like what's the point and you're not successful. So anyway I'm going to show you how to begin and I think we've picked a really nice spot today so let's go on over here and I'll show you how to begin. Okay here we are overlooking Bolinas. This is a very typical Bolinas day. Sometimes we get some sun but most of the time it's like this and I enjoy the fog. So here we are, ready to start. I have my little piece of paper. I have my perimeter. That's going to give me a basic idea of where I want to work within. And I have my brush, which I'm going to open up. Oops. OK, it comes apart like that, and then it slips right inside. And I'm going to take my water bottle out. Make a little bit of a mess there. Put a little bit of water in there, close it up. And then I'm set to go. What I also like to do is bring, around, bring along a couple other brushes. I like to bring a, a number 10 and a number 6. And the reason why I'd like to do that, you don't always have to do this. It just makes it a little bit more convenient. If I want to have, um, if I want to cover a larger area with clean water, this will make it a little easier for me. Okay, so what I would have is my perimeter here. And then I'm going to focus on the main shapes. So I'm going to have my little hillside about here, and then I'll come up with a couple little trees. I'm not going to focus too much on the pencil drawing, because I'm just trying to get the essence of the area and the environment and of my uh, time here. If I really want to record details, what I would do is I take along a disposable camera. And that's also something that's small that will fit into your pocket. That's if you want to catch certain light and shadows and whatnot. So begin with a light pencil sketch. Then go over the inside of your perimeter with clean water. Okay, what I want to show you is just by... I don't need to put a lot of paint in here 
to get an effect, just a little bit. Then put some pigment into your clean water wash and let it flow. I like to have um, these particular paintings be a little bit more moody. So by not putting in all the details, you get more of a mood. So the hills are still gray and they have a little bit of a green in there. So I'll add a little bit of that and a little bit of a burnt sienna. And let it blend and don't worry about staying within the lines. I'm just trying to get a mixture of colors right now. And then once this le uh, layer dries, I can go back in and add more details. So I'm not really too concerned about where everything is going. I'm just trying to get some colors down. Now if you have any hard edges, take a clean brush with clean water and soften up those edges. Doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but there's a lot of freedom in this particular uh, painting. Now after that dries, you can start to add more details. Now what I'm also going to do is take you around to some of my favorite sites and then show you some step processes. Now I'm going to let this dry. Okay, and now what I'd like to do is show you some other alternatives from that little Cotman uh, watercolor set. Because those little sets will run anywhere from $40 up to $100 and if you get a professional quality it'll even go higher than $100. Now you may already have a set at home that has pans of color in it. You may want to use that. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use it. Um, I like the convenience of those little watercolor sets, but there are other alternatives. So let's go over here and I'll show them to you. Okay, here we have other alternatives. You have my old Schmincke watercolor set here. It has lots of colors, but the problem with that, it's a little inconvenient because it's so large. And then here you have another little field set, which is a smaller size, which is great. And it has a collapsible brush, but it doesn't have a water container. And uh, it doesn't have a water cup with that. And then here you have a Yarka set, which is a very inexpensive set. And that's still usable. The colors are very vibrant in that. Uh, I, I personally, for landscapes, like our, um, Windsor Newton colors because they're a little bit more natural looking. Okay, so this is my little field set right here. Everything is contained in this little set. Now for these other alternatives, the way to make those work, let me get these out of the way of just a teeny bit here, is I would take, let's say for instance, this little field set, and I would take this mountain clay. I'll just take a little piece off this. And I would stick it on here and then I could either use a little water container like this or an old film container like that. And then I would just go ahead and stick that on there and now I'm ready to go. I would take my little paper and I've got it all set just like that. And then I would have a water container like this, a little water bottle, and then I'd put the water in here and it's not going to fall off. That mounting clay works really well. 
Now this is if you already have a set and you don't want to invest into another field uh, box. Okay, now again, you have your camera for uh, details. And this is a disposable kind. You, there are many different brands, but uh, that's always helpful. Now if you want to use a larger set and a larger cup, you just do the same thing. You have your larger cup, you have your double um, mounting clay here. It won't work for this size, but it'll work for this size. And then the watercolor pads, they're already pre-cut and they're in booklets. They work really well. But for me, I like the quality of the paper that I cut at home. And here we have alternatives. One of the best things about doing on-site watercolors is that I get to take my animals for a walk and they get to have a great time at the same time I do. And there she is. She's looking for little, little things in the ground. She's having a great time. Okay, it's starting to get a little misty out here. It's supposed to rain this afternoon. So I'm going to take you back to the studio and we're going to work on some watercolor progressions so you'll have a better idea of how to layer it for the final product. Okay, first of all we're going to start with our light pencil sketch. Then a clean water wash over the inside of the perimeter leaving the house dry. Then we're going to add some paint and let it flow into the clean water. As you can see, I'm not too concerned about staying within the lines. I'm going to leave my house dry. Then I'm going to accentuate the color and let this dry. After it dries, I'm going to go in with some random brush strokes and clean water and blend it into the first wash. Then I'll work on my roof allowing it to blend into the background. Then working on the shadow to help create depth. Now I can begin to work on my finer details using my compactable brush. Adding a darker color next to the building will help create depth. Now I'll go in and add like fence posts and final details. Just suggestions of windows. I don't want to overdo it. In this demonstration, I'll be using yellow ochre, green, burnt umber, and French ultramarine blue, along with the additional brushes of a number 10 and number 6. When I do landscapes, I find that these are the most natural looking colors that I like to use. I'll begin with a small perimeter, approximately 2 inches by 3 inches. This is the best for field study. Then I'll create a light pencil drawing focusing on my main shapes. Then I take a number 10 brush and I will create a clean water wash over the entire area leaving the building dry. Then dropping in some colors with, with another brush and suggesting trees, grass, sky and let that blend into the wet and let it dry. Then I'll go in with a number six brush and add suggestions of grasses and some details and some trees and my roof line or maybe the hills just a little bit just suggestion I'm trying to create an illusion I'm not focusing on every detail Finally, I'll go back in with my compactable brush and add my final details. 
more grasses, a little bit more in the trees, shadows, windows, and then I'll let it dry. In this demonstration, I'll be only using two colors to create fog, burnt umber and branch ultramarine blue, along with the additional brushes of a number 10 and number 6. Now the color is created by using different levels of water. The more water you have, the lighter the color. The less water, the darker the color. I'm again going to begin with my simple pencil drawing, focusing on the main forms. Then I'll take my number 10 brush and create a clean water wash over the inside of the perimeter, over the buildings, everything. I want this to be even. Then I'm going to mix those two colors of French ultramarine blue and burnt umber with a lot of water and I'm going to add it to a corner and along the bottom and, and I'm going to lift it up and let it run and blend into the wetted area and I will let this dry. Now with those two colors and less water, I'm going to start to focus on my roof and some shadow areas and try to bring out some of the forms. If I have too hard of an edge, I can always use clean water on a brush and then wash out a side and let it blend into the first layer. Let it dry. Finally, with my compactable brush, I'm going to go in and add the details with the two colors and less water like the windows, a little bit more on the roof, and let it dry. Keep it simple. Here I'm going to be working with more complicated shapes. And again, my approach is the same. I'm going to focus on my main forms, which are the buildings. And I can always add trees and other details of the landscape later. So with a pencil sketch, I'm going to create a perimeter and the shapes of the buildings. Then with clean water, I'm going to go over the inside of the perimeter, leaving the building areas dry. I'm going to drop some color in. A little bit more color next to the buildings will help create a sharper edge there and give it more of a definition. I'm going to let the colors blend into each other on the paper. That will help create more of a, a feeling. Then I'll let this dry. Then with a number six brush, or maybe even my compactable brush, I'm going to go in and add the suggestions of trees and the roof lines and enhance some of the color next to the buildings. That will help pop them out a little bit. And then if you have too many brush strokes, use your clean water and soften up some of those edges. Finally, I'm going to work with my details using my compactable brush and starting to add the shadows and windows and other details that I think I might like to have here. And then I'll let this dry. Don't overdo it. Now I'm going to begin with my light pencil sketch, then a clean water wash, then using French ultramarine and burnt umber, I'm going to start to add a little bit of pigment and let it flow into the clean water. I'll also use this color for the reflection in the lagoon. Now with yellow ochre and green, I'm going to start to suggest the hills. 
and let it dry. Once it dries, I'm going to put random brush strokes in and then wash it out with clean water. Then I can go in with the compactable brush and add smaller details and then wash those edges out with clean water. And then let it dry. Now I can add my final details, suggesting the trees on the ridge and other final details that I might like to add. Well, thanks for joining me today, and I'm going to continue on my walk. I'll see you next time. Come on, Hope.